Hey, I'm Drew and you are watching or maybe just listening to the anxious truth. The anxious truth is a place where we talk about anxiety and anxiety disorders, and how to recover from those things. Today, we're going to answer a question that I get asked all the time is the anxious truth, this podcast, my books and all my social media content. Is it a program? Is it a method? Is this a program for anxiety recovery? Well, the answer might surprise you because it both is a program and it isn't a program it depends on how you look at it. So why don't you grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you want to drink and let's talk about that. Okay, so is the anxious truth, this podcast, my books and all my social media content, is it a recovery program? Is this an anxiety program? Is this a method? What we're going to talk about today, we're going to answer the question because uh, I get asked all the time. And it's an interesting answer because it both is and isn't depending how you look at it. But hey, we have a new sponsor on the podcast I want to tell you about. This is new for us. And it's, it's been a long time coming. Today, we are sponsored by Dr. Magic Fingers Anxiety Phone Chargers. They're phone chargers, but they're for anxiety. And I think somehow there's good vibes in the plastic and they come through the metal prong. So if you if you plug your phone into Dr. Magic Fingers anxiety phone charger, you get happy and, and you feel better and your anxiety just kind of goes away. It's really quite amazing. And they come in different colors like this is the green one. I, I think this is for health anxiety. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, Dr. Magic Fingers anxiety phone chargers. It's our new sponsor on the anxious truth. So check that out. Uh, anyway, the anxious truth is not sponsored by Dr. Magic Fingers phone chargers. It's only really ever sponsored by me. So all of the stuff that I do is on my website at the anxious truth.com. And if you want to find ways to get more information or help from me, you can find books there and webinars and videos and a lot of free stuff too. And a morning newsletter and all that good stuff. And if you want to find ways to actually contribute and support the work by maybe buying a mug or a t-shirt or buying some books or just making a donation, you could find all of that there at the anxious truth.com. So go check that out. And hey, if you've already read some of my books, and you dig them, maybe head on over to Amazon and write me a review because it super helps me out in a big way. So thank you so much. But thanks to Dr. Magic Finger. Anyway, that was kind of fun to do. So today, we're going to talk about the idea that the anxious truth, my podcast, and content that sounds like me that I think this holds true, not just for my content for but for content that sounds like mine. Is this a program? Uh, is this a method? Is this steps? Is anybody doing the anxious truth? And if you followed me for any length of time, you know that I really just cringe when people say that. I don't like that. I don't like when people call it uh, Drew's method or the Drew method. Does anybody, I need to find a therapist that follows the Drew method or Drew's teachings. Like, ooh, it just kills me. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I don't like that. I don't like it because they didn't invent any of this. I talk about it all the time. I'm just really good at explaining concepts that are in wide use beyond just me. I didn't clearly didn't make any of this up, but I say that all the time. But I understand why people might look at it as a method. And I've even been confronted, like, clearly, this must be a method. This is a method, isn't it? And I'm like, no, it's not a method. And I'm so adamant about that. But let's really kind of dig into that and, and answer the question. Now, if you subscribe to my morning newsletter, The Anxious Morning, which you can find on my website at theanxioustruth.com, you'll know that we're talking about this topic all this week. But it's important enough where I just kind of wanted to sit with a cup of tea on a Sunday night and just chat with you about it for 15 or 20 minutes and sort of fill in the gaps because there's a limit to what I can do in these morning newsletters. But if you haven't checked that out, you can go check that out. So is this a program? And the answer really, if I'm forced to confront it, is that, well, it kind of is. This kind of is a program. But that depends because I'm going to tell you it's both a program and it's not a program. And let me tell you why. It depends on the scale that you're looking at it. It depends on the, the level of magnification that you want to put on this. So if we look at it in the, the Reader's Digest version, if you want to just click out of the video, the Reader's Digest version is if you look at it on the long term, on a big scale, recovery that might take months or a year to achieve, then yeah, I'd probably have to say that what I do looks a whole lot like it's a program. So maybe it is. But if you look at a very small scale and you zoom in to the moments that are measured in seconds or minutes, and those are the minutes, those are the moments that I know you guys care most about because in those tiny moments, those are the moments when you are most anxious and most afraid and feel most like you're on the edge of snapping or dying or passing out or something horrible happening to you. In those small moments, those are the moments most important to you. Those are the moments where you are really looking for a program. But that's the mo those are the times when it's not a program. So is this a program? Is this a method? Is this the Drew method? Well, it's definitely not the Drew method. But is it a method in a program? It is if you look at the long term. 
but it's not when you look at the very small scale in any given moment that's measured in seconds or minutes, the programness of this begins to fall apart. So let's talk about that. What do I mean? And in the morning newsletter, I talked about the idea, I used an analogy of building a house, right? So if you're going to build a house, you will have to follow a method or program to build a house. You might get that from a contractor or an architect, but there are steps. So if you look at the fact that from a, an empty piece of property to a house that you actually can live in might take months or a year to build, depending on what's going on, there will be a program. There'll be a method. There'll be steps that will be laid out for you. I have to buy the land. I have to clear the land. I have to design the house. I have to make blueprints. I have to hire contractors. I have to schedule them. I have to get building materials. There's all kinds of things that you would follow. You would follow steps to learn about building a house. What do I have to do? And then How do I do it? And what order do I do it? What are the concepts here? What are the overriding principles of building a house? So sure. Is there a method there? There's definitely a method there. Is there a method to recovery? Sure. I mean, when I wrote The Anxious Truth, which that's the book that you can find on my website at theanxioustruth.com, I literally subtitled it a step-by-step guide to understanding and overcoming anxiety, panic, and agoraphobia. So step-by-step guide sure does sound like a program or a method, doesn't it? So I'll have to plead guilty there. Is it a method? Yeah. If you want to know how to understand this and what the concepts are and what the principles of recovery are and how you'd apply them on the long term to get from maybe lost, confused, always anxious, panicky, stuck in your house, gripped with health, anxiety, whatever it is, to a recovered state where you now have sort of a healthy, normal relationship with anxiety and fear again, not that we make it go away because our goal is never to make it go away, right? This is In fact, probably, if you look at it that way, this is a program. It's a program not for feeling better, but a program for getting better. And if you follow the rest of my content, you'll understand what that means. Can't go into it now. But sure, there's a lot of programness there. It has all the hallmarks and, you know, and, and characteristics of a program or a method. So that's true. I would have to say that if you look at it that way, the anxious truth, the podcast, the social media content, the books and everything else is a program. It's a recovery program. It's an anxiety program. Fair enough. I'll take that. I'll still hate it when you call it Drew's program, but I'll have to admit there's a lot of programness on the long, you know, on the large scale. When you zoom out and take, you know, the 20,000 foot view sure looks like a program. But you don't care so much about the 20,000 foot view. You do because that's what gets you started if you're pointing in the wrong direction and you're relying on, you know, Dr. Magic Fingers anxiety phone chargers to get better or weighted blankets or whatever it happens to be. And that's not working for you. Then, yes, you do need a program that gives you the 20,000 foot view, teaches you really what's going on, why those things aren't working for you and what you have to do. So that's important. But really, once you get and start to move in that direction and start to move forward and you start to go toward doing these scary things surrendering to your fear, allowing, willfully tolerating, accepting, floating, you know all the words by now. You don't care about the big picture. You start to care about smaller and smaller slices of time because those are the moments, not measured over months, but measured in seconds and minutes and hours. That's, those are the moments where you experience the most anxiety, fear, uncertainty, vulnerability, all of those things, the sense of doom and catastrophe is very intense over the short course of very small slices of time, again, that are measured in seconds or minutes or hours, maybe. And so while you might want a program and you need a program to recover, that's true. And I can give you a program and people like me can give you a program that works on the large scale over long periods of time. You really want something programmatic and, and techniques and tips and tricks and hacks and specific techniques and instructions and steps that you can apply in those small moments, very tiny slices of time, minutes at a time. And unfortunately, that's where the programness does begin to fall apart. And I'll explain this. So if you go back to building a house, which is what we talked about in the morning newsletter, that program to build a house will encompass a bunch of different activities that will have to happen over those six or eight months or 12 months while your house gets built one of which is driving a nail. In the, in the morning newsletter, I, I use the analogy of driving a nail. And if you ask me, how do you drive a nail? I would tell you, well, you're going to have to get a piece of wood and get a nail and a hammer, and you hit the nail with the hammer until it's in the wood. And that's it. That is the program, that is the method, that is the tips, tricks, techniques, and hacks for driving a nail. Like, I don't have any more instructions that I can give you about driving a nail. At some point, while building a house is, in a, is a thing that might take you 12 months to do, just like recovery might be something that will take you months to do, in the moment, the tiny moment of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes, where you're driving nails one by one, 
I don't have any more program to give you. I have no more instructions to give you on how to get a nail into a piece of wood. Well, if we move that over into the recovery sphere, when you are super panicky because you just had an intrusive thought about harming your children or you're in a, in a panic because you see a spot on your arm and you're convinced that that means that you have metastatic melanoma and now you're in a panic or you're just panicking because you could feel your heart racing and you're breathing heavy in those tiny little moments where you're most afraid. This is where you want something programmatic. Give me tips. Give me techniques. Give me tricks. Give me more instruction. Be more specific, Drew. And I hear people say that all the time, but this is where you will hear things like let go. Uh, in Claire Weeks parlance, it would be float, accept, right? Uh, in Josh Fletcher parlance, it would be tolerate or willfully tolerate. And, and the word I use all the time is surrender. You're going to have to let go and surrender in that moment. And people are struggling with that because just like if you've never driven a nail before, it can be really hard to learn how to do that well, right? Carpenters take years to get really good at that. Uh, so you'll be bad at driving nails. You'll just have to practice it and get it wrong and stumble and figure out how to do it better and do trial and error. Well, the same holds true with the, the tiny moments of recovery where you're looking for more instruction. So people who are struggling with surrendering and letting go and allowing and accepting this horrible fear and these worst nightmares that they're trying to hold at bay and letting them actually happen to learn that they don't or that they can handle these these negative experiences and don't have to be afraid of them. When people are struggling to do that, and the only instruction I have for you is to let go, like let the worst happen, go ahead. And people say, well, it feels like I'm going to go crazy. And I say, well, go ahead and go crazy. That's I'm out of words. That's the limit to the amount of instruction I could give you for that tiny slice of time where you want the most instruction. But really, the most instruction and what makes things look very programmatic and methodical in nature is when you look at the large scale, and then I have a lot of instruction for you. So The Anxious Truth is an almost 400-page printed book because there's a lot of instruction that you can apply over months to get you pointed in the right direction and doing the things that you have to do. But when it comes time to do those things that you have to do, well, things get a little bit dicey because I don't have a lot of instruction and nobody does for the tiny slices of time, right? I can't say that enough. So is the anxious truth a program? Well, it is on the large scale, just like you would follow a program or method for building a house. Is the anxious truth a program for how to surrender as part of getting better? No, just like the program for building a house isn't a program for driving a nail, which you would do as part of getting your house built. So it's programmatic, if you look at it from the 20,000 foot view, it's decidedly not programmatic and not methodical and not systemic and not heavy on technique and specifics and steps when you're in the tiniest moments, which unfortunately are the ones that I know you care about the most. So when you want the most instruction, it's when people like me have the least to give you. Our instruction is designed to get you into that, that moment. Like, okay, you have to put yourself in that moment, but once you get in that moment, the program breaks down. I have no more program. I have no more program for you. So this is most. This comes up most often in the community surrounding this work, when people just continually ask for more. But how? But how? But how? There's no more. But how? I can't tell you any more how to drive a nail. Just like I can't tell you any more on how to be brave or how to surrender. It's a thing you'll just have to do and try. So really and truly. The instruction that you're asking for is the doing. The experience itself instructs you. And that's true in driving a nail, and it's also true in fully letting go at the peak moment of panic when you think you have to hang on and you don't. It's the letting go in that peak moment, that experience, having that experience, that is what instructs you for the next time. Just like driving that nail and maybe bending it or getting it wrong or missing the nail altogether instructs you for the next swing of the hammer. So... I, I wish I had a program that took you all the way down to the tiniest little slivers of nanoseconds and told you exactly what to do and what to think and what to say and how to breathe and how to hold your hands and, and do how to do everything. If I could give you instruction on how to hold your body, where to be in time and space, what to say, what to think, how to breathe, what to do exactly to make you, to make you surrender and have those productive experiences, I would tell you that but it, it doesn't exist. And this is a dilemma that I have that anybody that sounds like me has that any behavioral cognitive behavioral therapist has at some point, we can give you a lot of instructions, but sooner or later, it comes down to the fact that you just have to do the things, even though they are difficult for you to do and scary for you to do. So is this a program? Sure. It's a program. 
Is it a program? Hell no, it's not a program, but it's definitely not Drew's program. I cannot stress that enough. Like I just, I want to circle back on that because none of what I'm talking about or writing about is anything that I invented. I am not special. There are there's a lot of other people that are talking about the same things. <clears throat> there are a lot of incredibly well-qualified and, and, and trained and educated and experienced clinicians, therapists, counselors who are using the things that I talk about all the time. I'm certainly not the only person on social media talking about these things. I just happen to be really good at talking about them and presumably really good at, at encouraging people or empowering people or explaining this uh, in lay terms. And I'm, I'm thankful for those gifts, I guess. But I didn't invent this. So even if you do want to call it the Anxious Truth Program, know that it's, it's not anything that I invented. And understand that the programness of the Anxious Truth will break down when you are faced with that moment of maximum fear and discomfort when your job is to let go. There's, there's no program to teach you how to do that. Only a program that gets you to that moment that you've been avoiding for so long. So that is my little spiel when it comes to sort of the programmatic aspect of the anxious truth. Is this podcast, is my books, my Facebook group, is all of this content, is this a program? Is this a method? Is this a recovery program? Um, sure. It's just not a program that teaches you how to actually surrender. That you got to do on your own. So I hope this has been helpful. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. We're at about 18 minutes. That's as far as I really want to go today. Again, this topic is something that I also covered this should be a Wednesday when this podcast episode came out in the very same week on Monday and Tuesday, the anxious morning, the morning newsletter also covers this topic. If you want to read those or listen to those, cause they're mini podcasts, you can go and check that out. If you have questions or comments on this, you can always find me in the Facebook group. If you're a member of the Facebook group, you can comment on, on this YouTube video. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'd be more than happy to engage with you guys. We'll talk about this a little bit more. If it's something we want to talk about more in the future, maybe we can do this in a live stream or something like that. I'd be more than happy to engage with you guys. And that's it. So that is the end of uh, episode number 229. If you want the full show notes in this episode, I would tell you to visit my website at theanxioustruth.com slash 229. I got to listen to my headphones to make sure I have this right. And you know that this is over because there it is, music. <laughs> that is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. It is the music you hear at the beginning and end of every one of these podcast episodes. Ben wrote the song a couple of years ago, inspired at least in part by this podcast, which is amazing to me, and he lets me use it, and I'm so thankful for that. You can find him at bendrakemusic.com. If you're watching this video on my YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and turn on the notification bell so that you know when I upload more videos, and tell your friends about it. If you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast, on Apple or Spotify or some platform that lets you rate or review the podcast, leave a five-star rating. And if you dig the podcast, take an extra two minutes and maybe write a good review so that other people can find it and we can reach out and help as many people as we can together, which is really why I do this to begin with. So thanks for coming by. I appreciate you guys spending your time with me, a Sunday evening with me and giving me your attention. I will be back next week with another podcast episode, maybe sponsored by Dr. Magic Finger. I don't know. I do not know what I'm going to be talking about next week, but I will be here. And remember, as always, this is the way. Looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get enough